Hi, boys and girls. My name's Brother Mickey McGrath, and I'm an artist and a writer, and one of my favorite things to do is to give presentations to people of all ages on how to pray. And what is prayer? Prayer is communicating with God. And what I mean by communicating is not just talking to God. That's only one part of prayer. The other important part is listening to God. And one of my favorite ways to do that is when I paint or draw or color. I brought a painting along with me today to share with you. And it's a painting I did of myself as a little boy painting at home. When I was real little, I didn't feel that I was good at anything. I wasn't good at sports and I was real shy. And so what I loved to do was to draw and paint. That is where I also learned to pray. So now, let's take a look at what prayer is. I think you pray to God and thankful for something. It's one way that you worship of God and it, and it tells you how you're thankful for God. Prayer is something you tell to God before you eat your dinner. Prayer is a time when you get to talk to Jesus and maybe you could hear him talking back to you or when you talk and smell your hand and close your eyes. Prayer to me is giving God happiness. It's how you can kind of communicate with God in church and how you praise him without being too loud. Prayer is when you talk to God. Something important you should do if you ever need help. A lot of Christians do it. Um, to thank God for stuff and to ask him for stuff. It's not supposed to be something silly. It's supposed to be a time when you concentrate on Jesus. Prayer is something that is very powerful. Anytime we talk with God, it's called prayer. Every time we listen to God, that's prayer too. There are a lot of ways to pray to God, just like there are a lot of ways to communicate. You can pray to God using words. You can pray to God by being silent. You can pray to God by drawing pictures. And prayer doesn't have to be perfect. There's no spelling test for your prayers. God doesn't grade your prayers. For every different way that you learn to communicate, that's how many different ways you can pray. What are some of the different ways that people talk to each other? Some people read the newspaper or a book. Some people talk on the phone. Some people send text messages. Some people write with a pen. Some people use a tablet. Some people listen to the radio. How did people in the Bible communicate? One way that people talked to each other in the Bible was through messengers. A messenger was a person who carried messages back and forth between two people who were too far apart to talk to each other. People in the Bible also wrote letters. A man named Paul wrote a lot of letters. He sent his letters to people who lived in Rome, in Corinth, in Galatia, in Ephesus, all different cities. And his letters told people how Christians should live. Another form of communication used in the Bible was musical instruments. One of the most ancient instruments is the Jewish horn called a shofar. The shofar is a hollowed out ram's horn that produces loud, piercing tones. The shofar was used in the Bible to announce the start of a battle. Let's take a field trip to hear about another example of communication. Then, we'll talk some more about prayer as a type of communication with God. Field trip! Hi, I'm Carl Erickson, and I'm a guy that's a loss of light in East Van Nuys. The first lighthouses have been around ever since men got in the boat and wanted to find their way home. This light in East Ham is a warning to stay away. We have sandy cliffs, we have sandbars, we have difficult winds in the wintertime. This is a place you should stay clear of until you can get to your home port. The Nasa light was over the warning, a warning not to become a shipwreck. The first shipwreck here was back in the time of the Pilgrim. There was a Sparrowhawk and it went down off of the coast here. Another famous shipwreck here, which was a pirate ship. Even though the captain of the pirate ship 
was from this area. Because of the northeaster and the winter winds and the storm, he ended up driving onto the shore, the ship broke apart, and the gold and cannons were all scattered across the floor of the ocean. The light is a form of communication. Instead of a call that says, you're here, I'm there, it's a signal. In our case, it's a signal with a red flash and a white flash. That says to the sailor out on the ship, you're here, you're off of East Ham, you're off of Cape Cod in the Atlantic Ocean. We just visited a lighthouse and learned how important it is for ships to communicate with the shore so that they can stay safe in a storm. The Bible says that people who love God run to Him and He keeps them safe. And the name of God is like a strong tower. We can talk to God and He can talk back to us. As we've learned, there are many ways to do this. We've also learned that our communication with God is called prayer. Prayer is like having our very own cell phone that we can pick up, and God is right there listening to us and talking with us. In the Bible, there was a man named Moses who heard God talk to him. Let's listen to a story about Moses and hear about the special conversation he had with God. It's Bible time! Moses was a man in the Bible who grew up in Egypt a long time ago when the king of Egypt was called Pharaoh. Moses was the son of a Hebrew couple. When Moses was just a baby, Pharaoh's daughter took him into her own home and raised him like a prince. But even though Moses grew up in a big palace as part of Pharaoh's family, he didn't like how Pharaoh treated some people in Egypt better than others. He was really upset that the people Pharaoh didn't treat well were Moses' own people, the Hebrews. When he saw how badly Pharaoh treated the Hebrews, Moses ran away from Egypt. Moses went to live in a place called Midian, and he became a shepherd. One day, while Moses was watching the sheep, Moses saw a bush that was on fire. There were flames leaping and sparks flying from the bush. But somehow, the fire wasn't actually burning the bush. Moses couldn't figure this out, so he went closer to look at it. And that's when Moses heard God's voice. God called to Moses from the bush, saying, Moses, Moses. Moses didn't know what to do, so he said, here I am. Then God told Moses how much God was upset about the way that the Pharaoh was treating the Hebrews. God said, I have heard the Hebrews crying, and I have seen how sad they are. I know that Pharaoh was hurting them, so I'm going to rescue the people from Egypt and give them a new place to live. So Moses went back to Egypt. It was hard work, but finally the Hebrews escaped Egypt with Moses leading them. After they left Egypt, God kept communicating with Moses and the people in many different ways. Sometimes God showed his presence through a cloud. Sometimes God showed his presence through a fire. And sometimes God wrote messages for people, like when God wrote down the Ten Commandments on pieces of stone and gave the stones to Moses. Sometimes God surprises us by speaking to us in ways we don't expect. We can always be ready to hear God just like God is always ready to hear us. Boys and girls, now we have learned that prayer is communicating with God. And communicating with God means not just talking to God, but listening back to what God has to say to us. I hope you communicate with God every day.